Okay, welcome, welcome, Christina Merkley, and it is the process pop-up, and these happen spontaneously about once a week or so, and we're into, I believe this is our 11th or 12th one, and it is June 14th, Sunday, June 14th. Uh, welcome. We've got a smaller, more intimate group today, which allows us to pass around the mic and just do some quick check-ins. So, uh, name, uh, where you are geographically, uh, how you are. If you've been here before, we'll often check in on the emotional scale. I'm not going to flash it up in the screen, uh, but it's just come as you are, right? So where, wherever you might be on the emotional scale, and you might have a complicated mix of emotions, which is normal <laughs> during times like this. Um, and then if there's something in particular that's up for you that you would like to be added to the list of possibilities for processing today, please let me know. Uh, it's a co-created agenda. It's different every time. It's uh, processing work without a net because it's just live and we just see what happens. So uh, you can add that in your check-in. And I just find my way from what people bring forward in the check-ins about what seems to be the focal point for today. There might be one piece of work that gets done with one person or there might be several pieces of work that are done over our time together. We usually go for around 90 minutes. Okay. So I will just leave it open spontaneous, popcorn style, so for you to unmute yourselves and go in whatever order you care to. Um, I'll just check in myself. Oh, I'll, where's my little rock? Oh yes, I was just on the beach. It's been quite cloudy here in British Columbia the last while, and it was nice and sunny this morning, so I got to go to the beach and walk in the sand and do a little meditation and get ready for today. And there's these people that do these little uh, painted rocks, right? Um, Souk to Sydney rock hunt, and they, I always get that feeling when I'm going to find one. So I found this sweet little one today, which I thought was really nice for our group. So that's for all of us, a little sweet little painted Mandela there from the beach here in Machosan, BC, Canada. So, and overall, uh, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing well. I'm very lucky because I get to process a lot and it's always uh, co stuff that happens when I process, right? So we are all one. So uh, as other people are processing, it works that in me too. So it's really a gift to be able to do what I do during this time, which helps me to work with all the various aspects of myself. So I'm feeling pretty good. That's me. I'll go next. This is Donna. Um, I I'm really feeling pretty good right now, but I have spent I have my Apple Watch that reminds me to breathe about every hour, so I've done that many times today, and it's after two in the afternoon here, um, so that's really helped. And I wish I could remember just to do that every hour to take that one minute. Mm -hmm. Um, so since I've done that, I feel, I feel good, but I, um, my son had to be tested for COVID this week. And mm -hmm. even though in my heart, I knew, I just felt really like he didn't, but I got to tell you, you know, this, I realized the stress that it put just when there's a test out there and you're waiting, it just, I need it, you know, I needed to hear it and get that result back. And so that kind of put a stress on me this week that was, um, it was a burden. It, you know, it was, it was hard to get through days of, you know, waiting to get him there and then to, to get the, get it done and to see if he could tolerate it and all of that. And so I'm thankful that I got the test results back on Friday saying it was negative and, um, you know, but I just carried that energy in my body, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so I think today it's finally, <laughs> it's finally releasing. I went with a friend to a winery yesterday that didn't hurt at all. So, <laughs> and helping to reduce things. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of where I am right now. So, okay. thank you, Donna. Phew. Who's next? Anybody next? Hi, Christina. It's Jody. Can you hear me? Hi, hi, Jody. I can hear you. Yep. Great, great. Um, so I'm Jody. I am um, on Vancouver Island. Um, I'm up on um, 
Qualicum Nation homelands right now, so up in Parksville. Um, and I'm doing, I'm doing well. Um, I'm just touching base and seeing what's happening in your pop-up community. Um, yeah, just because I uh, miss this community and really love the connection that often um, gets generated here. Cool. Nice to have you here. Bringing the energy of Qualcomm Beach. Yay. Nice area. Hi, it's Connie Stewart here in Humboldt. And I was sorry, it took so long to turn my video on. I wanted to set up in my backyard. Nice. So I'll see the roses. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, I, I am doing so much better after the pro last process pop up. And I just want to thank you guys all. I really made the week. I was able mm. to, to give instead of, you know, just looking to receive. And so I felt like it just helped me to be able to help a lot of other people who were in pain too. So thank you guys for uh, that. Yay, for Connie. An hour uh, and a half. That was really a, a forever during this whole, that was the most precious thing of 2020 that's happened mm. to me. So thank you all. And thank you all who were a part of it too. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I feel like I'm, I feel like um, I really have been able to turn on and tune in to the blessings in this really hard time. Um, thanks to you all. Oh, you did the work. Thank you, Connie. Yeah. Good to hear. Uh, I'll go. I love what Connie just said, the tune, tune in to the blessings. What a, a, a beautiful phrase. And I feel like it's, I can connect with it. So I'm, I'm Kristen. I'm in Victoria on Vancouver Island. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, when you said, how are you doing? I thought I feel very settled, actually, which is a nice feeling. And, and that tuning into the blessings, I feel like I'm settled and have turned a bit of a corner. And that idea of we've had to let go of so many things. And as perhaps a new reality is on the horizon, I'm questioning what I actually want to pick back up. Because there's been so many things that I've let go of that have been a part of the blessing that I've been able to tune into. So I'm really questioning. I feel like I've learned a lot about my myself. For one, that I haven't had a speck of cabin fever as I'm home alone. <laughs> so I'm wondering, I'm wondering, hmm, how much do I want to put myself out there, and how much do I want to create a life that is more home-based? And so I feel that's part of the the blessing and part of the. The settling that I'm feeling, but I also think I'll need to be very intentional to to not pick up those things when our new reality. Mm -hmm. For now, feeling really grateful and, and happy that I uh, I didn't I actually didn't when I saw this um, come up the, for today I wasn't going to be able to make it and then something canceled and I thought oh what a nice blessing that I oh to, nice to join. Yep. so I'm glad to be here. Nice to have you here. I hear also. Um, construction or visioning in there yeah thanks Kristen hello shall I go next yes please Ruth and um, thank well, I'm sorry it's okay go right ahead well I want to thank you for doing this um, I missed the other one I, I I should have signed in for that but I for some reason I didn't but I'm really grateful that you're having something like this because I am very lucky in that um, because of the shutdown of our college, all of the instruction went online and I'm a full-time online instructor. So I got extra work. So I've actually been <laughs> extremely busy making up, um, you know, I had more classes than I had expected and already it's a lot of work. So um, I've been sitting here like five hours a day working on my classes, but thank goodness my daughter lives in the neighborhood. So I've been able to visit with her and have some company, but it's been very interesting to realize how isolation, when you're not talking to people, when you're not interacting with them, there's a kind of like sleepiness going on up here. I feel like almost like my creativity just went out the door 
and uh, I don't find much going on in my head. <laughs> and it's really weird because I'm reading my students' papers, which is fine, and I'm still doing that fine. But it's like when I go out to talk to other people, like my daughter has uh, homeschool teachers coming over. So there's always somebody at her house to talk to. I find that I just don't have a conversation like I did before. I realize how intelligence is a lot of sharing with other people. That's uh, an interesting feature that I found. Um, oh, I'm in San Francisco, by the way, in that area, Bay Area. Um, I also find it hard to sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, my pattern is totally changed. I usually had no problem going to bed about 11 and getting up at seven in the morning. And now sometimes I don't go to bed till nearly one and then I'll sleep through till 9.30 or something. And it's like the whole day just feels weird. Um, and some nights I'm not sleeping even that much. So it's very odd. Um, I'm doing... I can't go to the gym, but I do have exercises that I do. And I, I do go for walks every day, but it just doesn't seem the same. And I can't quite put my finger on. I mean, I feel like I'm doing almost as much exercise, but I'm not, my body doesn't feel like it's had a workout. I know that sounds weird, but um, it's, it's a very odd time. And um, let's see. Um, I just find it very lacking in stimulus, but even though I'm working hard, I'm not feeling stimulated. Does that help? <laughs> yeah, well, it's whoever you are today. So that's what yeah. your, your report is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, obviously there's so much strange stuff in the world at large, right? That it's a time unlike any other time. Um, one thing I uh, cue in on what you're saying too is just you going online. Uh, I've had a jump on being online. I took my business online and I have for the last, I don't know, eight years or so, it's kind of crept up and almost, you know, become almost full time. I did have some in-person events, but that's a big shift and it's really weird. And uh, uh, I, I've had to do a lot to kind of counter it by moving out to the country and making sure I get out in the woods. And now I'm gardening, Donna's uh, the big one who's a gardener, right? To help balance the online and the buzz and the, yeah. and as beautiful it is to be able to connect like this, it's not the same as in person. So it's, yeah. it's a very odd um, uh, transition to make. So, you know, I, I, and the stuff about sleeping too, cause I, I, I'm a big believer Right now, I have my feet on a grounding mat, so I'm a big believer, especially if you're sensitive, and I know you are, Ruth, yeah. that the electronics really interferes yeah. with your subtle energy system. Yeah, so, it does. Yeah. yeah, you're right. And um, I'm sorry, well, the Sunday I was going to say, I forgot what it was. Anyway, I, yeah. I feel like this is a wonderful way to get together and feel connected, and I have been watching online gym classes like Pilates mm. and that actually has been quite nice, but it's still not the same as being with other people. Nope. And <laughs> it was a whole, to me, a revelation to find out how essential this community thing is because I've been very much alone for quite some time mm. and I never, it never bothered me until now when I realized I'm not afraid of being alone. I'm happy to be alone, but I need some interaction. And that's what I found has been affecting me with, oh, in a way I didn't even have a clue. But I was very glad I went online three years ago when the, the first offer came through to learn how to do this because a lot of people my age, in the, I'm in my 70s, and they are totally freaked out because they had to learn what I learned in two years, they had to learn it in two months. So a lot of people have been very freaked out. <laughs> anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Nice to see you. <laughs> Lynn, I'm not sure what the static, but it's really staticky. It was, yeah, it was last week too. Health. I tell you what, I'll pass, I'll let somebody go, and I'm going to go get my other earbuds. Okay. Okay? Yep. They're cool looking, but they might be a little <laughs> buzzy. Yeah. So while Lynn is gone, I'll... Yeah, perfect. Thanks, dude.
I'm June and I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin in the USA. Um, and the session that we had uh, on the 4th uh, where Connie was uh, processing was also really helpful for me to be a part of that process and to uh, witness that. So thank you, Connie, for um, your vulnerability and sharing there. Um, and in the past, well, probably since January, I've been really trying to get, um, become more aware of the ways that in my role as a university professor, I've perpetuated white supremacist culture without really knowing it. And, um, and so I, I um, have been kind of uh, weaving in between feeling really pissed off at being white and, and the um, unearned privileges that that has given me in my life. And also angry at the systems around me that, um, that I have tried to change, but haven't had enough power to do so by myself. And so um, the last couple of weeks, I've been writing a lot of letters and emails and having a lot of conversations with people in my university who are pretty clueless about how their power has been used in a way that margin marginalizes and um, oppresses folks. So, um, so I feel kind of energized that, that I have some new awareness and I'm able to use my voice to help um, at least raise some consciousness. And I'm also retiring and, and leaving that system and planning to, to write more about how my own um, actions as a teacher have uh, perpetuated uh, some of that white supremacist culture and try to, you know, shine some light on how can we change those systems and um, even things like how we use time and a false sense of urgency, that kind of thing uh, in education. So, um, so I, I feel very, um, I've gone through despair and frustration and anger and fear and, and felt ashamed of my own uh, complicity, but I also feel like this is a, a really important time in history mm -hmm. to, um, to be awake and to start changing and ch ch challenging these kinds of systems. And education is one of those, you know, that I can have some influence on. So, um, so I, I also feel very optimistic about the possibilities for change. So, and these processing pop-ups have been very helpful to me to, you know, calm my own nervous system and, and try to be uh, more useful uh, in the process. So, so thanks to everybody who's, who's been involved. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great report out. Thanks, Jude. Yeah. Hi, this is Lynn back. How's the sound now? We can hear you beautifully. Yes. Better. Oh, great. Wow. Um, I think everything happens perfectly for a reason that I caught the, the last half of what you shared, Jude. And also resonating with um, our last session with you, Connie, I was so touched and moved and inspired actually in some new ways by what you were processing. So I just want to say thank you also for, you know, um, showing up and having your experience that day because it really impacted me. So how am I? <laughs> well, uh, on a high note, I just finished a online first time Bangra fitness class <laughs> by a guy in Yukon. I'm in Vancouver, by the way. And uh, I found out about him from my daughter's boyfriend, who's also Sikh. Um, and this guy is just like pure love, beaming out his eyes, his face, his heart. And it was such a joy to be in this class with him that it just totally, my, my energy just shot way up from the morning of dragging myself out of bed. <laughs> so, uh, so that was, that's really a high note to share today is uh, I'm feeling good. And, you know, physically I had a little bit of movement today because yesterday I went for a, a long run on the uh, seawall 
and I've been sort of trying to build up my run, my running clump, my distance again because I had foot surgery last December. So I made it to eight kilometers yesterday, and for the American friends, that's about five miles. <laughs> and um, congrats! Yeah, that was probably about twenty minutes longer than my best time prior to that. And wow. I was so it felt good, but it was mm-hmm. a it was a push. Push. And then it. afterwards, mm-hmm. I sat on a bench, and and about ten minutes later, I could barely walk. <laughs> so I really seized up, and then um, um, it turned out that there was a, a pub open with lots of physical distancing set up and a place to sit out on a deck and have some nice food and a nice cold beer. And uh, so I did that. I was running with my son. And then we went back to the car and there was a guy sitting in the car that um, I had run back to the car to get my wallet or something. And he was there. And then when we came back again, like 45 minutes later, he was still there. And my son was going to be driving. And so I got in the passenger seat. So I was right beside this guy who was sitting in the driver's seat and I, I, the, I rolled down the window and I said something about his dog. He had a beautiful dog in the front seat. And somehow we struck up a conversation. The guy had a Scottish accent. So, of course, that led to where are you from, etc. And we ended up talking for like 30 minutes. And this is back to you, Ruth, that feeling of, you know, it's wonderful to connect online. I'm so grateful for that. But to connect with live human beings. And I had such a pleasurable conversation about a whole host of things in that 30 minutes with a live human being you know appropriately distanced but it I thought to myself oh my god it was like crossing the desert and having a nice cold drink of water it was just I felt I don't know what it was like calming on my nervous system even and just the pleasure of you know striking up a conversation finding mutual interests and how much pleasure that brings to a day and uh so it's still sticking with me how um how much how important that is and in the same breath i realize that i've come to appreciate a lot more the online interactions that i do have both as a as a trainer as a course leader and uh as a coach um and as a community member in circles like this that Mm -hmm. uh, I'm grateful for all the layers and I'm also aware of how important it is to keep finding places to ground Mm -hmm. and connect, you know, with the earth and opportunities to talk to strangers and things like that. So I think that's where I'm at right now. And there's another layer for me that kind of goes deeper, which is going back to Jude and Connie, um, my early training in sociology and then into intercultural studies and diversity and then in grad school i was all about race class gender sexual orientation and our whole lens was you know anti-racist training anti-phobic anti-homophobic anti all this stuff and at some point i got to a place where i said can can we just talk about what we're for instead of what we're against i got so burned out of that And then I got into coaching. And of course, the whole frame is, and all the stuff around brain science is put your attention on what you want and where you want to go. And the more you do that, the more you're going to attract that kind of energy into your life. And so, you know, I've been wallowing that for about 15 years. I've never let go of the diversity stuff, but I stopped talking about what I was against. But I feel stuck between these two paradigms. And this is what's calling me now in these last 90 days in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, how do I step up and, I mean, to be a more vociferous ally of people of color who have uh, suffered for centuries under racist systems? That's something I want. And I, how do I also continue to unpack my own racist programming and all the multiple layers that are in all of us? Mm-hmm. And, and how do I do that and still hold the space of let's put our attention on where we want to go? Like, I still want to, I want better language for what we're fighting for. <laughs> and I feel really stuck often between those two paradigms. And when I try to speak out about um, uh, things in the circles of people who are in coaching and in the laws of attraction, I get pounded down pretty fast. Um, and people don't tolerate that. There's this kind of tyranny of the positive. Um, 
And, and so I, I'm bringing this to the table because I wonder if anybody else has, has felt that. The, 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 somehow we haven't found a way to integrate these two worldviews and they are so important. Both, both sets are so important. Yeah. Okay. That's me for now. Awesome. We may have just found our focus. Christina? Uh, yes, please. Christina, can I just say something? Mm -hmm. um, I didn't realize you were here, Connie, but I just wanted to thank you really deeply for the processing that you did because it was something that I really needed um, and appreciated. And I hope that you felt good vibes this, this, since that time when I have thought about you and and just thought about how much I appreciated being able to be in that space with you and all of you um, during that because I'm isolated and I, you know, don't have those connections right now and I'm not going to be out and about for quite a while. And I was just felt so much like um, I needed to hear, hear from somebody besides what I just hear on the news. And I just also want to say that my heart goes out to the family and the people in Georgia um, who've lost another young man, young black man, um, was it night before last and then the protests and the uh, anger that's in frustration and everything that's being expressed because um, it's it's tough for me to um, to to be in stuck in and not be able to have to to have a, a mode for connecting with people and processing all of that. So mm -hmm. thank you so much, Connie, and everybody else that participated that day. Okay. Thanks, Donna. I think I got everybody checked in, correct? Okay. Um, there's two things going on for me, so I'll just go, go for them process-wise. I want to uh, just kind of blah, blah a bit from, from some of my experiences about law of attraction and kind of that... Um, a uh, very particular point of view about, you know, only going for a certain thing and how uh, my own particular practice has shifted over time uh, w with that. Uh, then I also think we have a, a wonderful opportunity to work for and against as a polarity square as a way to access that. And it might not get to all the nuances of what you're uh, spoke to there, Lynn, but it'll certainly give us an access to some of them and, and help us um, as that particular process does, right? Get into each of those quadrants and then the balancing and transcending of them naturally, right? No pushing, but we naturally find our way there by exploring all four of the quadrants. Um, back to the law of attraction stuff, it depends because that's a huge um, overarching term that can be a applied to a lot of different uh, uh, parties and points of views and faiths and you know whatever so um, but I do know that uh, I've always been uncomfortable with that and I'm uncomfortable when people label me as a law of attraction teacher because I certainly don't think of myself that way uh, but I there was a, and continues to be a, a, a it's a part of my path and it, the Abraham Hicks material in particular uh, for about 10 years there, I, I listened to like 17 years worth of their material. Now, when you listen to 17 years worth of that particular material, you'll see that it's very nuanced and one's got to be careful about blanket principles. And that's what I love so much about processing and particularly processing with individuals. It's challenging in a group uh, because you can have people in very different places. And so what's going to be right for one person is actually going to be the opposite for somebody else, right? So I find as a process professional, I really want to be able to meet with the person I'm meeting with and meet them where, where they're at and which way is up, right? On the emotional scale, uh, it actually might be, pro if you're really low on the emotional scale, anger is actually a step up, right? So that's what needs to be ex expressed. And that's um, uh, the path of integration and power is to go there. For somebody else, that actually might be a spiraling down and would be, from an energetic point of view, you know, the opposite direction. The more as I go along, the first thing that 
that I'm doing and you're seeing that show up more in my work for those of you who are doing those uh, free individual sessions and watching and tracking them is, is um, the inquiring consciousness and welcoming what is, right? Um, it's, it's ironic to be called the shifted coach, but more and more it's like the be present coach, right? That's the shift <laughs> and not to be bopping yourself out. And that happens a lot with metaphysical and some law of attraction. Um, places and, and, and teachers and philosophy. However, there's, there's he, from a visioning, again, I, somebody who comes from a strategic planning background and, and strategic visioning, right? Not just the planning, you got to have something to plan towards. So the, so the vision and that power, like you just spoke to Lynn about focusing on what one does want as, a, as opposed to what they don't, right, is so powerful. But again, it calibrates to, is a person ready to be there? Is that naturally which way is up instead of forcing it and or making it a law or a rule, right? Like, I just think that's, that's spiritual bypassing. That's what that is, right? And, and tyranny in some ways, right? So emotional or um, energetic tyranny. It's just not natural. So um, I hear Kristen, right? You're checking in and I can just feel it naturally with you with vision as your process has unfolded. That's just naturally where you're at. And, and those tools that I share over on the uh, processing uh, page, right, for this group, the processing pop-up page is a bunch of tools. And so I cherry picked out the ones that I thought that would be of use to the and it started with COVID and obviously 2020 is keeping on going here, right? But in there are visioning tools, but in there are, are uh, emotional tools and energy alignment tools and planning tools. And there's a whole smattering because it depends on the individual and where they're at now, right? Um, which may be very different from where that person might have been six days ago versus six weeks ago or six months ago. And why my favorite question as a coach is who are you today? right? Or who are you now? So, so I hear that. I, I have that same frustration and I've been in places where I've experienced that tyranny as well, as much as I, I just think it's a lack of sophistication, frankly, that there's just, you know, that, and that's maybe at the earlier stages of um, metaphysics or spirituality stuff that, that has a met metaphysical blend to it. I think people start there and if they stick with it, hopefully they mature to a, you know, a, a more robust place with it. So, yeah. Um, so let me bring up, I'm gonna bring up the, and anything you wanna say to that, Lynn, Lin, or yes, anybody. Thank you. Yeah. I, there is something I wanna say to that, which is something I've always appreciated about you since I, way back since before, before we started process, this processing pop-up stuff s several years ago was, um, the way you have integrated many different models. Um, and I have never felt the tyranny of the positive with you. Mm. <laughs> Quite the opposite. Like that Hicks process of choose the better feeling state is a beautiful process to acknowledge exactly where people are and then move and shift for themselves, right? And to me, the whole idea of solution-focused coaching is not that you should have a solution fully formed the minute you're, you open your mouth, but that, that the end result of your processing can be some great solution for yourself or some great shift. And so that's my argument. And I, yeah, anyway, I spin around just because one of my biggest clients is an organization that unfortunately they haven't... Uh, they're stuck in the, you only speak in a form that is moving towards what you want. And there's no room for any kind of honesty, em emotional honesty, pro honest processing that isn't uh, purely in a positive Pretty. frame. Yeah. Mm. Pretty. Yeah, exactly. So that kind of bypassing is what I experience. And it's, it's, it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway. Yeah. Anybody else on that topic? on that riff. Okay. Uh, I've been doing this lately of plunking it in the middle so I have some white space around it. So I'm just gonna do that. There we go. Okay, for anybody who might not have seen this before, 
I th yeah, I did. I put this over on the process pop-up page. So this is one of the templates that are available. Um, down at the bottom, you can see the source, Leslie Temple Thurston, a wonderful book here. Got it on my desk. Uh, Marriage of Spirit. Enlightened Living in Today's World. And she's totally open for people sharing and using this process. So that's why I've taken the liberty of creating a visual template around it. Now we take, yeah. go, go I ahead. Just, yep. I wanted to mention that I, um, I put the link to the PDF in the chat. For oh, thank you. For anybody interested in getting the map. Um, I like working on it on my iPad in addition to having it on the screen. So, so perfect. Excellent. Thank you. You make a good pat. <laughs> All right. So uh, when I hear polarities, and that's what I heard in what Lynn said, right? So, and uh, there are a lot of very powerful polarities happening in the world at large right now and depending on how you're encountering things and what's up for you. So I heard in you, there's a polarity that you're in touch with and it's for and against. So when you have the polarity, in this case for and against, you go ahead and you write it in the template. So there's a desire, there's a desire for, um, well let's figure out if for and against is our it might be some different verbiage, but we can certainly work, work with for and against. Also, when you do polarities, these nuances that we're about to do about the language, they can be interesting too, because they kind of, I always think of it like neuro links, right? Those little grooves in our brains or in our psyche or being, these things are laid in in different ways and different subtleties. So the language change as you poke around something that's similar, uh, you can do them on, multiple ones. So is there anything else for and against if other terminology that's kind of in the same ballpark? I'm going to start with you, Lynn, and then we'll open it up for anybody else. So if I get specific into that, I think about anti-racist, anti-sexist, anti-homophobic. Right. Right. And so those are all antis. Those are antis. Right. So if you flip it, what's the flip of anti? Yeah, and I wish that I could be the one to invent the fabulous language that the whole world goes, yes, that's what we're for. <laughs> but I've never come up with something other than um, honoring human diversity. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm passionate about is human diversity. Every single person is unique. And I, that's the only concept I've ever been able to sort of capture for myself that, uh, that resonates for me. I'm zeroing, I'm zeroing in and it may be a more general way and we'll see if this emerges differently, but sure. I'm just going with the general for and against. What is the flip of anti? Pro. Okay. So we got anti and pro. Anybody else? uh this uh I have a, I have a little go, go ahead yeah i'm gonna throw a spanner in the works mm -hmm. this morning i took a, a a melatonin last night so i slept really really well <laughs> <laughs> and my brain woke up this morning and i knew i was going to write about something to do with this topic because one of the things and it, this is probably going to shock some of you is I've been aware that, that the people on this planet are not all human and there are elements which I've, I've experienced myself and which I've read about and um, thinking of uh, David Icke, talking about a, a form of people that are not, don't have empathy, do not have love, do not care about other people, they only care about their greed, and we call them the elite. And to me, when we're all confused about, do we feel this about people with black skin, or do we feel that about people from Mexico, and all this stuff, it's really not human to do that. I feel we've taken on an element of these non-humans. And I know people don't like to think about this, they don't want to know about it, but I 
discovered it writing my book <clears throat> about uh, what I went through with Kundalini awakening, that there is an element that controls our mind. And many people don't have a clue that their minds are controlled. But we're seeing, I think, in the things that are happening now, controlled people behaving badly. And who is controlling them? Non-human energies. So I'm sorry to bring that in, but I can't discuss this without bringing in that element that I feel is not human, that is controlling all this discussion about race and so forth because it wants to divide the humans and separate them so that they don't know that they're a complete family, they are unified, they do love each other, and their hearts are based in the right place. Sorry. Yeah, thanks Ruth. Sorry, uh, I hope I don't throw it all no, off. No, no, well, I trust the process. And you know, uh, he, I too have had a Kundalini awakening and that's how we know each other. And yeah. I run a practical energy work class that gets into subtle energy work. And uh, that, that would be a whole other topic to unpack for sure, what you just brought forth, which yeah, I'm certainly not, willing to do. There's yeah. no, 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 no. There's a couple of things I want to say. So first off, I'm just tapping because of the, the emotions and-, and Sorry. Uh, no, no, you don't have to say sorry at all. I trust the process. So um, it's a free will. It's a free world. People get to think what they think. If we're going to talk about diversity, we can also talk about diversity of beliefs and philosophy and perspective, right? So um, now one thing I want to you to know about is we have process with the same tool, victim victimizer. So getting to some of the, the, and that did come up in terms of psychopathic mindset. So I uh, would refer you to that because that's probably going to be a good one for you to watch and, and will help with the processing of that. So that's the first thing that comes up is, yay, we've already done. That was the first one we did because that went so huge with all of us, victim victimizer. Okay. Now I'm going to, uh, I have divide and unify as a polarity, right, that came out of there's a lot of polarities I could extract out of what you said, but I've got that one divided and unified. Help me with the flip of elite. So we've got elite on one side, uh, whether we want to go into the kettle of fish about, we're talking about human elites, and then we can go into the whole non-human um, uh, side of things. But flip elite, what's the opposite of elite? If you're looking at a polarity. The word comes downtrodden or a yeah, slave. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do downtrodden. What's the flip of downtrodden? Rulers. Okay. Powerful polarities here. Remember the tapping I'm finding for yeah. myself because we're tapping into really powerful archetypes and energies here and realities. So now I'm thinking rulers and ruled, but not necessarily downtrodden. Some are, some aren't. Mm -hmm. um, if, what's the flip for you of downtrodden? For me? Mm -hmm. Empowered? Maybe. Okay. Yep. Let's hope with that. And we got empowered. Now, it's tough to do in a group because it's going to resonate with different people in different ways, right? But, and it doesn't make it wrong, but it's like for all of you, pay attention to the ones that resonate for you, right? We got a coffee table between us. People can say a bunch of different stuff. It's up to you about what you pick up off the coffee table. So, now, it, and um, go with the language that worked for you, Ruth, because that's your version that does it for you, right? That's where the charge and the trigger is for you. And I would say that for everybody. And, and Lynn, you gave me yours, right? So it might be empowered, downtrodden, if that has charge for you. Don't know. Anybody else got another one? And then I'm just trying to figure out where to go. I'm finding myself pulled towards for and against and divide and unify. 
Who was that? Somebody. Oh, I, yeah, please. This is Connie. Connie. Yeah. Hi, sorry. I, you know, I'm sort of having a reaction because I think that to me, like one of the things that's been coming up is that there's the norm state and then there's people pushing from the norm. And so, you know, like in the discussion around power, um, mm -hmm. people bring scarcity, right? And so if you can get back to saying there's no scarcity of power, <laughs> you know, like there's no scarcity of wealth, the, that, you know, it, we don't have to hoard, um, you, you know, we can have a sharing state. So, mm. so my polar, I mean, I have a reaction to the fact that there's so much around creating the polarity, pol lau, well, polarity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, the split. Yeah, creating the split. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when, so when we're trying to unify, there's people that are trying to say, "Don't unify, split." Right. And mm -hmm. you're even seeing that in the movements today, right? So. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so so out of the ones on the board so far, is it divide and unify that has the the zero in effect for you, or is there another one that's emerging? Yeah, I think that the that the divide and unified mm -hmm. is. Yep. Okay. Let's go. Let's go there. And and you know, there's tons of different ways and processes and things that we could do on this topic. This is a particular one. Uh, and when we do it, we'll see what happens. And there may still be more to do because these are very powerful uh, energies that we're working with. I just want to say hi to Susan. Hi, Susan. <laughs> we've done quick check-ins. If you want to say a, a quick hello, we're, we've figured out, we're figuring out what our focus is going to be today. And it looks like a polarity square, probably around divide and unify. Uh, anything you want to say before we start? Welcome. Can I add something? Just a sec. She's, she's, um, oh, I she, thought she said no. So did you say no? Uh, pardon me. Okay. You're unmuted. So I, or you're muted. I can't hear you. Is that better? Yep. Okay. Uh, nice. To, not, I haven't been able to do this since I've been working like every day and I just eventually worked myself out and I had to take a week off work and I just thought, uh, there's only so much you can do. Yeah, you know? you're working in healthcare. Yeah. And, you know, two jobs and then the demands are crazy. So I just burnt myself right out. Mm -hmm. Now I know my limit, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so now I, I think I'll drop one day of work. So I'll be only working five days a week instead of six. And one of those is an overnight shift. So that also screws up my sleeping and then just everything's out of balance mm -hmm. so then i i have to go back to work tomorrow so we'll see how that goes Aww. yeah talk about kundalini come on everybody let's send some energy to susan <laughs> yeah <All right>. so <laughs> who's on there in the front lines doing healthcare work in the midst of this. So thank you for what you're doing. Oh, yeah. You know what? I signed up for it and I enjoy it, but it's hard work. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, I have a patient who's 99 mm -hmm. and he just got, um, oh, shoot. What's that rash called like around your ribs? Shoot, Shingles. 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 Yeah. He's 99. He just got shingles. Ooh. So now we have this to deal with too. So, you know. Can we get a first name? We're going to send some to focus Ross? there. Ross? Yeah. My old dude, yeah. Yeah. Sweet guy. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So. Hello, sweet guy. We send you some sweet energy. <laughs> and our sweet, sweet Susan, who's doing what you're doing. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's healthcare. I guess everything's kind of crazy for everyone these days, I think. Yes. Really, it doesn't matter what your job is or if you don't even have a job. Everything just seems nuts these days. It's hard to... Everyone's got a different thing, you know, whether it's their income is short now because they can't work or... Uh, 
just anything any you change your schedule you change this you you know you have you have to wear the mask you have to wash your hands it's kind of getting to everyone i think i feel like can you put an eye on it too it's kind of getting to me yeah oh yeah it is getting to me for sure and yeah. the other thing that happened i live at the top of a hill and it's uh it's a quite a nice street like over the river valley and then the road goes into the river valley and the other day i was just i saw the police they were doing some kind of training exercise and i was interested in that because this is a busy uh place and then uh i saw the black uh, lives matter march i it just came out of nowhere and i was like wow like i i uh I, ne I never thought I would see that in my city. Like, I, n I didn't think that race was a problem. It's, fu it's funny, I'm trying to, I I've never thought of people of different colors as less. So I kind of, I don't know. I guess I don't witness this racism. Although my friend who's a nurse from Jamaica she came here and they made her do an English test, which is ridiculous. And um, she, they uh, made, they failed her on some kind of ethics exam and she has to take some courses and they're quite expensive. It's 12 o'clock. <laughs> so it's, um, I do, I guess I see it. I just don't, I just don't notice it. So, but anyways, that was kind of an eye opener for me. That was right, you know, in my block. I just that seems like something from the the past, the sixties. The I, I don't know. I'm really out of touch. That's all. <laughs> That's all I gotta say on that. Mm -hmm. Invisible knapsack showing up again. <laughs> Can I ask one just thing? Uh, I've been thinking about because a lot of what's going on is people's lack of self-worth. I don't know what the opposite of that would be. Whether it's not pride, it's not arrogance, but I know this is a very, to me, what I'm seeing with these people kneeling and the whole situation of why this has come about is people's feeling of lack of self-worth and lack of value. Don't know if that's going to throw a spanner in. That's the yeah, we're, we're getting a little off here, but what's okay. the flip? What's the flip of shame? Arrogance. Self-worth. Um, I don't know. Not sure. Like pride. Right. Oh, self-realization. There's so much to process with what was said in multiple comments just now. So, um, uh, Susan, I would direct you to some of the process groups previously. I know you're super busy right now and I would just trust the unfolding of your process. But yes, it's consciousness raising that is happening. And it mm. is an eye opener if you've been very privileged as a, a white woman to uh, not have encountered racism and think it's something in the past. And it's not. And, mm. uh, and it's, it is a shocker if that's your um, sheltered world to, to realize that's not happening or that's that is happening and thinking it's not. Um, I'm glad you have your colleague who you got to up close, see a little bit of her experience, which is helping you to understand some of the things that happen for people of color. It's just a regular basis of life day in and day out. And so that's helping you in that particular situation to see it. And, uh, We'll see what unfolds for you and for all of us as this continues to uh, work its way across 
our world and open us all up in ways that we really need to be opened up and made aware of. So, yeah. Anybody else want to say anything before I attempt to bring us back to a polarity square, but I don't need to, I can go where we need to go. Yeah, if it's okay. I, I, Please, I Lynn. Like yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm not exactly, I don't know how this is going to come out of my mouth. So I'll just preface it with apology in advance if it's messy and awkward. <laughs> I'm just uh, resonating around what you were saying, Ruth, about uh, people who were not human. And I think that is part of what racism is, a, racism is, is when we dehumanize anybody, even the so-called elites. The whole thing about hegemony is the process of we internalize the ruling class's interests and we then treat ourselves that way and participate in our own oppression and treat others that way. And a, a, a leap I'm making is um, Ibram Kendi's book. I don't know if anybody's read it, How to Be an Anti-Racist, but he was talking about his young early years um, discovering how racist he was towards himself and his own, uh, you know, other black people and the peeling away all of those layers over the years. And I think that, and, and even I'm flipping to Brene Brown right now because there's so much, so many polarities in politics these days and everywhere. But every time we dehumanize somebody because we disagree with them or we're um, outraged by their choices. And believe me, there's plenty of reason to be outraged. But anytime that we, call them non-human, we're actually doing the very same thing that's part of the racist process, which is thinking that somebody is less than, or I, I, maybe I'm talking myself in a circle, but. Well, I, and I think it, for me, I, I, it's come back to the divide and unified. So that's part yeah. of the, the division process. Yeah. And, I, and I'm feeling a little sad about that, that we've gone that way because anti and pro seem to be, at least what I put out there was, I would love to see through this process feeling more empowered about language that I, about things I am for and somehow thought that maybe this process would bring us to that. Um, so I am definitely against a boy going for a, a black boy going for a, a run in a neighborhood and him being murdered by people. That's absolutely horrifying to me. And what does it tell me about what I'm for? Right. I mean, one thing I am for is that no matter what color your skin is, you are treated with dignity and respect and you deserve to have the same safety that anybody else has. But is there a shorthand way of describing that? This is the kind of thing I, I was kind of hoping for from this process. Yeah, I think we need to go to a magnetism map as opposed to this one, although this one is a good one, too. Right. I mean, there's multiple things that we could be doing. So let me just give this one a quick save. And let me see. Uh, Christina, this is Jody. Do you mind if I chime in? Please, Jody. Awesome. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to um, bring a bit of um, caution around the um, self-realization and the shame um, polarity and the self-worth polarity. I think um, that is actually coming to view it that way, I think, is coming from a place of privilege. And um, when we live in a white supremacist world to ask people to have self-worth um, or that they're lacking self-worth, I think um, is, is um, harmful. And um, it doesn't take responsibility for, I think, the way the world is actually functioning and has functioned in a really long time. So just being cautious of, um, yeah, just, just being cautious about people's actual um, space and opportunity to participate in uh, um, self-realization or self-worth and get out of shame when you're in survival mode and just um, living in a white world. So I just wanted to bring some caution around that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure if we actually had worked that particular polarity, that's the sort of thing that would emerge out of working that polarity. Yeah. And some, uh, and you know this about me, given the role of what I do in Shift to Coach, um, uh, trauma and the, the path of dealing with trauma internally or collectively is a massive path. And that's what I often am working with, with myself and with the people I'm working with. And that ultimately, hopefully that we're all trying to do at a collective level as well. And the human species is finding itself through this. So I agree with you totally that, um, and I can understand how that's triggering to hear uh, some dancing around polarities as we're finding our way through this particular process that of course that would bring forth that it's not as simple as uh, what's this called <laughs> snapping your fingers right uh, as it might seem if we're doing a, a flip to try to find a polarity oppressor and oppressed was another pair that just popped into my head mm -hmm. okay so for all of you, right, as we press and oppressed, this tool, which we may or may not use today, but this is a tool that we can each use to examine if you've done the polarity before, you'll know having gone through that process with whatever polarity you've seen us work before, that it's a way to maturely poke into all aspects of the quadrant and bring stuff that's unconscious into consciousness. So pay attention, everybody, about which ones grab you, right? And which ones rattle you and which ones have charging and triggering. That's gonna be something for you to individually work and to explore. And wonderful stuff for us to do collectively too because all the ones that have been brought forth just as we can see is there's understandably charges and triggers happening as we're just figuring out polarities right like this is the power of doing polarity work and there are many many important polarities in the midst of what's happening in the world and particularly when we get into racism Okay. I want to end with magnetism map, Lynn. And um, uh, on that page that I share, there's a whole series of magnetism maps. There's individual, there's dyads, so you have one person. So you can do a magnetism map for yourself. You can do a magnetism map for a partner, some sort of pair or partner. You can do a magnetism map for a, it's a group. You can do a magnetism map for the world and you can do a magnetism map for the galaxy. So they're operating in different worlds. So I think your desire for four, magnetism map is a great tool to, it's like create your world, right? What world do you want to put a vote for? And if you're finding that the going against only gets you so far, then the magnetism map is a way to corral your thinking and feeling into the four place. So I want to end, I want to do both. I want to do divide and unify, I think. Maybe for and against, I don't know, I'm still kind of, you know. Um, but I think both of them will get us in the same neighborhood. And then I want to go into the magnetism map. And please keep in mind that in a group, right, if I'm with one person, I can calibrate with each of you individually and meet where you're at and work with what's emerging for you and, and what's the hot spot for you. It's really difficult in a group where we got people understandably got different um, access points to things. So if the work we, it's, some of the work we're gonna do today is gonna really hit it for some people. For others, it's, all, it's not. So 
know that there's a whole suite of tools. I've got those individual sessions. In fact, Jude, you could put the individual session link for me into the chat, right? So I'm doing my best to provide opportunities to be of assistance for where it, where it needs to, where it can be of assistance and it might not all be in the group setting is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so, cause there's so much here. It's so thick and powerful and rich and important. Yeah. Okay. So allow me some humanity to not do it all perfect. Yeah. Uh, so let's go into divide and unify as a starting place knowing I think we're going to go into the magnetism map and I may go over time here. So for those of you who can stick with me time wise, wonderful. And we'll keep the recording going if you need to leave and you want to see what ends up happening after you leave. Okay. So let's go into now this polarity. And again, if this polarity doesn't do it and out of the conversation, there was something else that got stirred and you can find yourself to a polarity there by all means, use the template and work another polarity. So uh, desire for divide, fear of divide, desire for uh, unify, fear of unify. Now for each of us individually, once we get into these four quadrants, some of them typically tend to be more conscious. Like you're like, like uh, for myself, I go, oh, desire for unify, yes, you know. Um, some of them are gonna be more unconscious, meaning you don't usually go there. And it's like, what? Like there could actually be a fear of unify, right? Or there could be a, 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 a desire for divide. Right, those are the two for me that come up as being more unconscious would be the fear of unify and the desire for divide. Because I'm a nice, open hearted, kind process worker type, right? So we're going to have that, those kinds of things are going to be up for us, where the other things are going to be more unconscious, <laughs> typically. So pay attention to yourself whenever you do a polarity square, which ones are top of mind for you that you tend to go to on a regular basis and which ones are unfamiliar. Probably the ones that are unfamiliar are actually gonna be the work, right? To poke in and actually, wow, what do you know? I actually do have some of those things. Okay, now let, we'll do this as a group. Um, you start with where can you find it within yourself? Um, if you can't legitimately find anything within yourself, then you can go find somebody else who could, can see doing that thing and then try to put yourself into their mind frame and see what they, they would be thinking. Okay. You'll see as we go along, like if you, some of you, we've been talking about elites or we've been uh, talking about the, the non-physical organic evil forces, right? So uh, if you put yourself into that mind's frame, what are they getting out of this? How is this working for them? Helps us to understand it more. So let's start maybe with one that's a little more easier. Let's talk about the potentially the desire for unifying. Where can you find within yourself or within the human species around desire for unifying? And particularly in the midst of what's been going on these last weeks uh, with George Floyd's murder and everything that has risen to the fore uh, that has been there and his murder has been a catalyzing event for such consciousness raising and awareness and protesting and shaking up the systems and changing things so desire for unify what do we want to do why do we want unification what's that going to get us One of the things that comes to me is the, the end of violence. Okay. And um, flip violence. So if you're, uh, you're leaving violence, so what are you going towards? What's the four?
There's something for me about healing. Okay. Thank you. What was coming to mind for me was safety. Mm -hmm. I've got harmony. Um, what comes up for me with Unify is a, um, um, a world where all benefit. As a coach, I'm obviously into uh, uh, human development and human actualization. Right, so with coming together in unification, uh, that uh, everybody's passions, everybody's gifts, everybody's piece of the puzzle that they're here to do and bring, you know, uh, is supported and is fostered, has a, a fair chance to manifest. Um, for me, I, it, it feels like it gives us the ability to move forward, not necessarily the same way, but still um, um, some kind of forward together, um, just movement in a better way. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think of oneness and harnessing collective consciousness. And respecting diversity and something about conscious evolution. Mm -hmm. There's a polarity embedded in here though, and that is respecting both autonomy and belonging. So people have freedom of choice and they, everyone belongs. Everybody is worthy. This feels more like the map now, <laughs> the magnetism map you're talking about. But anyway, it's all good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's part of the polarity, right? Yeah. yeah. Great. So keep poking into that, right? And this might be your opportunity for beating the drum of what you're for. So all those things that felt against, flip them into what's the for. You know what? There's a little thing I just got to say it because I notice when I talk about what I'm for, what what makes what I feel sad in the same breath because, for example, the argument these days about Black Lives Matter, and then other people say, well, all lives matter, and that drives me nuts because Black Lives Matter. This is what we need to put our attention on right now, and not water it down. <laughs> And so if I turn around and say, everyone is respected, I feel like I'm watering down. Okay, that's the, the, okay, that's you know the, I mean? <laughs> this is good. This is the fear of uni unifying. So this is what happens when we poke into unify, then you go, wait a second, if we just do all unify, there's a problem here. Because right? it's, it's whitewashing to use a <laughs> an ironic expression, right? Right. Now. People's unique well, it's kind of Challenges. a reason why that word is the way it is. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it, it's whitewashing. And what, what is it doing? It's um, uh, tossing out very significant, important differences. It's ignoring differences. Yes. Okay. That, Good. To me, it's like the difference between equity and equality. 
you know, equality is treat everybody the same. Equity is some people need more help than others. There's a beautiful cartoon. I don't know if anybody's seen it around, but it's these three boys trying to watch a baseball game. And there's a tall boy and a medium and a short a short kid. And the short kid gets a, a box to stand on so that he too can see over the fence. That's equity, right? That's so anyway, I'm sorry, I'm all for it. No, 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 this is good. Yeah, I mean, so, so what you're poking into with fear of unify, help articulate it, help me get it down onto the map. Whitewashing, ignoring differences. If you think about that scenario with the three so boys, what's the essence in there? Fear of unity is treating everybody the same when people's needs are unique. Okay, very good. And Lynn, I just want to say the newer addition to that drawing is take down the fence. Okay, so let's put take down the fence here. Is that right? Did I put it in the right place? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, now we're starting to open it up. If anybody's got some stuff still around desire for unify, let's get that on the table. And then what's also opened up is the fear around unifying. Um, I would say fear is loss of identity. Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity, like I said before, but I'll say it again, right? Go inside yourself and see where these things are in your own experience. And then as you're considering other people, uh, bop yourself over into somebody else's experience, get on into their body and see what their mindset and perspective is, right? Doesn't mean you have to agree with it. We're just finding where is the fear of unifying. You know that expression people, you've probably heard it said before, if I do, if I do it for you, I have to do it for everybody. That um, expression has always triggered the hell out of me. And it's into the fear of unifying, I think, when people say that. No, maybe I've got it twisted. Anyway, to me, it's like if, if, we're, in, if we're honoring somebody's autonomy and their uniqueness, their interests are going to be different. Their needs are going to be different. Their desires, their goals, their wishes are going to be unique. So that rule is just so fucking irrelevant. <laughs> and when people say that, I don't know, I don't know where they're coming from, but it's always triggered me that that statement. Okay, so you're seeing what is the fear of unity in there? If I do it for you, I have to do it for everybody. And Lynn, what comes up for me it is means that's not fair. That that it means that then people who don't deserve would get something that they don't deserve. If we did it for one, we have to do it for everyone and some people don't deserve. So yeah. unify then, fear of unifies is that we, people who don't deserve get something that they don't deserve. I, oh, and I see it the other way, which, or not a different way, which is um, we can't do that because the cost will be too prohibitive because we'll have to create this something, support, for everyone, just because one person needs it. I think it's Instead getting acknowledging... into, a, Sorry? into a scarcity model, too, that if yeah, we do it for everyone, there won't be enough. Scarcity in there. And yeah. going back to the abundance. The other thing I would say, and this is because when I was in school, I was the best in everything. I was like number one in the class and that was my ego and I needed it <laughs> because I didn't get it at home. So in a way that feeling of being recognized for being a little bit above everybody else really helped form a lot of my adult character because I wasn't getting that from my home. I was put down at home. I was the youngest and I was an extra daughter they didn't want and so 
that would go away. You wouldn't have recognition of people that had achieved a little bit more than others. And I know that's an ego thing, but then this is what we're talking about. That's what, yeah, that's what we're getting into, the unconscious side of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. Okay. And one of the things that raises for me is the loss of privilege. Mm -hmm. Bingo. Mm -hmm. Probably spelt it wrong again. I always spell it wrong. <sighs> Show my privilege by not being able to spell privilege. There's no D. Yeah, you got it right. It's two eyes. So yeah, two eyes and threes. You need a mnemonic like privilege is all about I, I. Maybe that will be I ledge. <laughs> is that it? Do I have it now? It's the I. Yeah, it's in the middle. A lot. Yeah, you got it. And there's no D. There's no D. Ah. English is crazy language. <laughs> I've been teaching it for 50 years. I should know. <laughs> wow. Don't worry. I will learn this and it's part of what I need to learn. It's very ironic, but also such a symbol. L-E-G-E. -E. Christina, there's something um, that in Lynn's comments that that triggered something for me, and I, I don't know exactly if it goes in the desire for Unify or the fear of Unify, but as a teacher, and I teach about 150 people in a class, one of the things that I've always tried to do is give people an equal opportunity to succeed. And, and so I've tried to not play favorites, you know, not to discriminate against people um, and not to give my white students an unfair advantage. But sometimes that means that I, I, I don't accept excuses for why something was turned in late. So, so it's like I want to have a sense of fairness and um, but also hear the, hear the reasons, but when it's white students, I'm less, I'm, it's like, they've already got privilege. It's like, they already got the box to stand on in a way. And so it, it's like, it's something I've really struggled with is, is how to help everyone succeed and thrive. Um, without putting up more barriers. Does that come up for you when we poke into the fear of unification? That you would, you would lose that, that ability to distinguish or to do different things for different people? It's weird because it, it, for me, it really, that's part of my desire for unification mm -hmm. is that everyone. There, there exists fairness for everybody. So, right. yeah. But it's not the same. It's not me. It doesn't mean being treated the same. It means being, being able to take into account uh, circumstances. Okay, good. Uh, take into account circumstances. Go goes over here you remind me of carol gilligan's work in a different voice uh, around women's morality of care right which is taking context into account um when we're considering what's fair yeah that's beautiful right so the ethic of care versus the the ethic of justice what's just right yeah so the fear of unify might mean the loss of justice. Yes, good one. <laughs> I 
or the loss of the context of care. I mean, it could be either one. Good. This is all about teasing it out and knowing these in a deeper way than when we began the process, right? So the act of poking into this, you're really teasing out things that maybe you've never considered before. Excellent. That's what it's about. Excellence is another thing that you will not get. You won't get those people that are brilliant geniuses shining up there in the sky in the stars because you're going to make them all be homogenous, right? So the fear of unifying is losing excellence and homog homogeneity. Yeah. Do you want to spell that one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, you're the, the English teacher. Help me. H-O-M-O-G-E-N-I-E-T-Y. I E T Y? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. E, e I T Y. Homogeneity. E I, and sorry. Yeah. So, uh, what comes up for me, though, is when we confuse uni unifying or unity with homogeneity. Like, what about unity and heterogeneity? So, everyone's unique. Everyone has the freedom to be themselves and we can still have un unity. Well, so you're, go you're going to transcendence. Yes. Ultim ultimately, that's what's happening now is at, as you're working the polarity, then you're yes. transcending the polarities. Great. So that shows up even on the other side where desire for uni unify it says here, I'm thinking about autonomy and belonging uniqueness and unity mm -hmm. they're all polarities it's mm -hmm. true yep any more on these two and then we're going to switch i guess yeah i guess i'm having i i had a reaction to the I, concept of losing excellence because of unity i think that 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 is um, <laughs> brings up the fact that the fear that unity does not mean similarity or, <laughs> you know, or a, a desire to force people to the middle mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. And I, I do think historically that's what unity has meant is shut up, you know, ignore, uh, be of the same religion, be of the same background. Um, and so the fear is that people will not understand what unity is. Or it'll be the, old, uh, the, old, the older definitions or a very specific definition of it. Right. Yeah. Well, and then maybe acceptance needs to go over in the desire. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Help me get it down, Connie. I'm not sure I got all of them in the... I know I didn't. So I got acceptance over there. What were you we saying? Was it similarity? There was two that you came up with, the differences, similarity and... You know, one of the things about listening is that you have to listen to the words coming out of your own mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were in a but flow this, state. <laughs> but this is very, it's, it's hard, right? Like it's very... Uh, we're pushing into things that it's new territory in a way, new thinking territory and new feeling territory. And that's why it loses too. Well, I, I just want to also say I'm grateful Lynn is, is, and Lynn keeps speaking out because when you were trying to get us to for and against, I was thinking that you, you were leading away from root cause and you're not, you're not leaning to, um, but you know, that what, what it for and against brings up for me is like on a single action. Mm. Right, like we most of us can agree what happened to George, George Floyd was wrong. Would we have agreed that that was wrong if it hadn't been videotaped? Right. Um, so that, you know Absolutely. that. <laughs> well, <me. laughs> no, because it would have been reported as uh, he he resisted arrest or something. Yeah, it would have been. And, it, and then we and then we're 
Yes, and we are not, we're not opposed to police officers using force against people who resist arrest, right? So, so that's the, um, so anyway, Lynn, thank you for, key, for, for speaking more because I've been having less of a reaction to for and against based on <laughs> the world. So, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, let's go to the other uh, side of the polarity here, which is the dividing. How about fear of dividing? Unifying and dividing, we're just poking into these forces that are very up right now in our world. And there's a polarity, one side of the polarity is around unification, and there's another side around division. And maybe I should do my grammar correctly and put division instead of divide. So fear of division. And this is what happens with the polarities, right? It's, it, it, some of it is gonna sound similar to some of the other quadrants we've already done, but there's a slight difference when you look at it this way, or sometimes a great difference. So as we use the word division and what that means, right? What for you individually, what is the fear around division? More conflict. Mm -hmm. Othering and dehumanizing. Well, for me, it's death. Mm -hmm. Yes. What else? Fear of division. Being on the wrong side. What happens if you're on the wrong side? I'm wrong. It's like that. It's like for me, something that Connie said a little bit ago about um, not, it's like not having the right under or the healthiest or the most conscious understanding of what unify means. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been taught that, that going back to the whitewashing, that being human means being white, being, I mean, that's part of the white supremacist culture. And so for me, part of the fear of division is that, that I'm not seeing other perspectives that are more accurate, more true, more, it's like I, my vision is being um, clouded by racism and, and that I'm unaware of. And so, um, you know, and in the United States, that's what, what our president and other people in power that don't recognize their racism you know, that's what they're, um, they're using the power to divide us. Got that one. Um, I found a loss of perspective because like what I found being living, a, you know, in this three months of isolation, that the interaction with other people actually increases my intellect. I know that sounds weird. So it's like I'm losing perspective. I'm losing the interaction of variety. Like I'm thinking about when I learned Spanish and I found out there were words in Spanish that said things that you can't say in English. And it was so such an eye opener. And then, of course, I've subsequently learned there's many things like that in other languages that express concepts we do not have in English because we're like focused on money and marketing and selling and all that. That's the English focus. But in other languages like the Alaskans and so forth, their whole concept is about snow. <laughs> and it's like, it opens up your world when, and your awareness when you realize that they all add something to being human. 
So loss of in interaction and variety, loss of... Variety, yes. Um, loss of growth and development and broadening our horizons. <laughs> mm -hmm. Loss of love. You know, I think about throughout history, people who've loved each other that have been prevented from being together because they were a different color or a different religion, mm -hmm. right? You know, when we were talking about being on the wrong side, another angle on this that struck me was being on the wrong side of power. I mean, whether it's right or wrong, like there's so many abuses of power that we see. What happens, on, what happens if you're on the wrong side of power? Well, ultimately it could be death, mm -hmm. <laughs> but a lot of um, mistreatment, abuse, mm -hmm. and you know, the chronic mistreatment that people of color have experienced it's like it erodes your self-esteem erodes your sense of possibilities for your life that kind of chronic de devaluing it gets internalized and as a female on the planet i feel it i mean i have tons of privilege as a white heterosexual but as a female i feel that devaluing in relation to white men. I feel like I have no voice. What happens if you don't have a voice? If you take that a bit deeper? I What's don't matter. The... Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, no. when, I, when I lived in Hawaii, I was a Howley, white face. I was the one discriminated against, and it was on many levels. And uh, one of the things I realized about it was, you know, all of these brown people did not like white people simply because, as I think you probably know, that the Americans took over the state and kicked out the queen. And they, it wasn't legal. <laughs> Am I muted? No, we can oh, hear okay. you. Sorry. And so this happened to me on so many levels, like uh, because my name was not Japanese, I couldn't get a job in the local school district. But my girlfriend, who was from New York, who was just as Jewish as could be, married a guy with a Japanese name and she got the job. And it was so obvious but it wasn't really that hidden but there was nothing i could do about it and it felt incredibly frustrating to know that there was this prejudice against me because i had white skin because my name was an american name and i wasn't able to do anything about it that was an incredible frustration for me um I managed to do okay in the university, but not in the, the schools, the public schools, because my name was the wrong name. So that's kind of probably how a lot of people feel who've been discriminated against because of where they were born or the color of their skin or whatever. So just wanted to mention that. Gave you a taste of some aspects of yeah, so if you, if you extract out um, of your experiences, I wrote some of them down, but that if there's division, then no voice, not mattering, unemployed, discriminated against. So yeah. if you're unemployed, what happens? If you're discriminated against, what happens? What's the fear? Reality in that situation. It's, it's very uncomfortable, I mm -hmm. can tell you. But fortunately, I had a husband, so I wasn't poverty stricken. But had I been like a single parent or something, it could have been devastating. It could have changed my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, poverty stricken, devastation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the other thing that comes up for me when I think about fear of division is thinking about hegemony again. The very fact we are divided by these, all these concepts, all these experiences, is what enables the power structure to continue the way it is. 
because if we all unified and really exercised our voice, we would, we could change, we could change the power structures. Great. So I'm going to put that flip over on the other one here. So which divide is... and conquer approach by rulers throughout history. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Um, oh, so the, uh, I wrote it wrong, so just let me get that out. So the desire for divide, which is um, keeping power. The des well, it's more like, well, assuming that the power that's currently in place is unacceptable. <laughs> the, well, the fear of division is yep. losing our, our power to change our societal structures. Okay. Good. Lose power to change. Assuming democracy and not everybody can even say they have that privilege. Okay. Um, and I was moving over to the other quadrant and it may require a mind change, which is you may put yourself in leader or elite or oppressor, uh, victimizer, uh, take your choice to be able to find a desire for divide. Even more powerful if you can do it within your own psyche, right? So where have you had a desire for divide? Or take your, some of you have mentioned different politicians. So uh, for your, not saying this is wrong, but your projection of that politician, right? If you get in there, why are they doing that? What, what's in it for them? So the first one that comes to my mind is as an employer, imagining that if I keep my people from being allowed to talk about their salaries, then nobody's going to ask for more money. Okay. And in them not being able to ask for more money, what does that do for you? More profits for me. Okay. So <laughs> desire for divide. So in there is more profits. More control. Mm -hmm. And also desire for dis divide is um, to keep the status quo. Mm -hmm. Maintain the power I already have. Mm -hmm. To be, I don't have to be accountable oh, for my actions. Sorry, Connie. No, you go first, Jude. I don't have to be accountable for my actions. So if you're not accountable, what are you? I can do whatever the hell I want. Yeah. Go for it, Connie. I was going to say self, um, self-absorbed. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, uh, uh, continue like oblivious, ignorant. On the mild side, right? Uh, don't have to confront my ignorance. Don't even mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. I'm ignorant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oblivious, and, yeah. Uh, experience myself as superior. Okay. Um, so something that Jude said, and then Lynn, you brought it back up for me. Um, when you don't have to justify your actions, like because you keep people quiet, then they don't need justification for why salaries are different. Or Jude, you said you, if you um, don't allow some excuses or some explanations that's a better word for work not done like so 
like if I then don't have to face those things and it might already be covered in here, but it's just, then I don't have, um, I, I, the I, word integrity keeps coming up for me. I don't need to stand in my integrity. I don't, nobody's holding me accountable for, you know, those things. I make them easy on myself by not, um, allowing those conversations by, you know, so there's no transparency and I don't have to um, answer for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kind of like I create my own standards. I don't have to live up to anybody else's. Mm -hmm create the standards yep i was i was gonna say lynn uh my way or the highway mm -hmm. <laughs> ruth i'm um finding myself going back to the non-human in terms of being in control. So what's the desire for divide? Ooh, control, <laughs> total control. Mm -hmm. And what does, what does total control get in terms of planet Earth? The environment, the people's energy, the resources, the water, which is going to become very valuable, the ability to decide what happens. And to steer it in the direction that you and your buddies want to go and rather than have anyone oppose it there's no opposition mm -hmm. i'm thinking yeah, i get to stay comfortable and not called upon to change or grow i get to keep all my privileges mm -hmm. So think inside yourself as I rattle off these four and just see if there's any that are still there on the surface. And you can do it within yourself or you can bop yourself over into the other, quote unquote, and feel it from there. A desire for dividing. Where is the desire for dividing? Just gonna say all four of them and then you can let me know if there's any more to write in there. Where's the fear of div dividing or division? Where is there a desire for unity or unifying? Where is the fear of unifying unity? Anybody have any that would be painful not to have up on the board? If so let me know and I'll get them scrawled in here. Funny, it was tickling my consciousness like 15 seconds ago, and I feel like it flashed too fast through my head. Yeah, but if I open my mouth, maybe it'll come back. I was kind of going back to this whitewashing idea. Like, for example, if I, I, if I take the example of Black Lives Matter and then other people saying, well, all lives matter, and it, it waters down the unique experience that Black Lives have. That, and even within that, individuals within all of that. So, so uh, actually a pro of dividing is to see the unique experience that someone might have and, um, you know, give honor, give care, give respect to that is actually a positive thing of, I don't like the word division, it's more like uniqueness, but... I, I don't know how this fits. Okay. 
So you're Help saying it, you're <laughs> saying yeah. If we keep divided, then then difference and uh, uniqueness, specialness, recognition, all those kinds of things can still exist. Yeah, although no, I'm thinking of difference instead of division, and those mm -hmm. are different words. Yeah, and different concepts. So I just see I've they've got mushed together. Okay. This is also what happens when you work polarities. Yeah. So for me, fear of unity is um, fear that I have to look at my own prejudices or, you know, whatever's going on. I'll be open to a lot of questions, I guess. Questioning myself. Mm -hmm. And that wouldn't happen if things just stayed as they were, right? Right, right. So you'd have to question yourself. You'd have to do inner work. That's always scary. Raise your consciousness. Yeah. And, um, and why would it be scary? What is the fear? If you do that, what are you going to find? What are you, what are you afraid of? Um, Afraid that um, I'll have to, well, the, like I, the Black Lives Matter is different, but where I live, the natives are treated mm -hmm. awfully. They are, they are the equivalent of, um, like I, my friend said, oh, I don't understand racism. And I said, well, can you imagine going in a store and then have people follow you to make sure you don't steal? Like, just simple things like that like like you go into a bank and people think they're gonna ask for money but really they're just because they came to the bank you know and that's totally totally because they're native oh. yeah so let me go back to your looking at if i look at my own prejudices uh i'll have to question myself i have to do inner work i'll have to raise consciousness and there's a fear in there right so there's a fear of looking at one's own prejudices fear of what you're going to find i'm, I'm going to assume right or fear that i need to redress that okay i don't know how okay good so things to address but don't know how because i feel personally a huge I don't know if it's guilt. I feel responsibility for okay. the, yeah. the natives because my family came here a long time ago. I'm sure they, they even the land we're on, it doesn't belong to us. We took it. Mm -hmm. Like everything. And then they're treated like trash. Oh my God. It breaks. I, I don't know how to fix that. I feel that a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't. And if you don't know how to fix something, what does that do? How does that make you feel? Frustration. Uh, hopeless in a way. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Stuck. So hopeless, helpless, stuck. Frustration. Mm -hmm. Frustrated. Guilt for sure. Yep. Got guilt up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a little easier to not go into the unity thing and leave things as is so one doesn't have to poke into all those things and yeah. deal with them. I have one for, sorry, you finish? Fear of division to me is being excluded. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, good work everybody. This is the kinds of important explorations that need to be happening at this point in time. So not so easy Christine, to do, oh, hard sorry. to poke around. Please go ahead, Connie. Connie. Yeah. Oh, I, I just wanted to say in fear of unity, what came up for me was actually fear that it would, ha would happen too soon. Ah. Right? So it would be shallow. Ah, okay, good. Like there's a real, you know, there's a real desire to say, okay, we're going to get to unity now. Like, you know, what, come up with the quick solution. Uh-huh. Okay, <laughs> very good. one bill and everything will be better, you know. Good. 
So too soon, it'll be shallow, quick solution. And if it's too soon, what's the fear? If it's just like, boom, there you go. What's the fear? It well, will make a difference. Yes. It won't change anything. It won't be planned. Won't change, it won't be planned. I don't, I don't get that, Ruth, where, where's that? Meaning it'll be very quick and it won't have gone through ah. the process of studying and thinking and thinking about all the variables of what would happen. Okay, so not properly done. And um, because it's just so important, Connie, let me go back to, and it won't change. It's going to be too soon. It's going to be shallow, quick solution, not planned. Things aren't going to change. So if things don't change, what does that mean? More death. Yeah. <laughs> it means exactly. we're back here the, yeah. the next time somebody has a video camera. Exactly. And so I think about, I'm sorry. It's okay. I was going to say, and continued, like, quality of life suffers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And opportunities to thrive are restricted, curtailed, thwarted. So I was thinking that re, you, um, the fear of unity in there, there's requires some reparation. Mm, mm -hmm. Very good. And um, what's, what's underneath the fear of reparation? My responsibility. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and it's, uh, that's a big, yeah, that's, um, it goes to the, like, um, I don't know how to fix it. I don't know what my responsibility is. It's, um, you know, like I have a, a, a couple of friends who have explored that because of property that was taken and some things like that. And so, you know, each one of us looking at that is a, is, is a big, job and it's necessary okay so what's the price gonna be and yes. then if it's good it's a huge price and is that going to bankrupt or shatter or change yes yeah, yeah. okay fair enough that's part of the picture in here yep Okay, go go on once, go on twice. If you have something, it would be painful not to get on the board. Knowing this continues to work us, right? So this will continue probably like some of our other process pop-ups, right? To continue to unfold after we even wrap up. This is the power of doing the, the work. So look at kind of if you go to the beginning and thank you we've it's we needed extra time this is just so important so we're we're stretching our time here so thanks for those of you who are able to continue to stay but if you go back to before we started this we did a whole bunch of stuff now we're it's still in play and it's still going to be working our its way through us uh, but as you look at the work you've done with all four quadrants and poking into some of those more unconscious places. The two other steps here is the states up at the top. We may be able to start to whiff and smell some of these things that go above the polarity more into unity consciousness. So there's a whole list of them up there and I'm going to use my gauge and you can certainly jump up and express if you think my gauge is off. 
but that's just a quick way for me to go through this list to see if the work we've done pokes into any of these. Then at the bottom is going to be a, a release, a little prayer work, right? To let it go into the larger aspects of ourself and a consciousness and for asking for some grace, because obviously these are big things that we didn't solve through doing a polarity square, right? So yeah, uh, although some work has been done here. Uh, so, acceptance. And for me, not quite acceptance. Attunement, I'm going to say. It's made some attunement, maybe some finer attunement to the depth of this and the, the balancing of this. Um, balance, maybe a little in there. Bliss, no. Clarity, some more clarity. I'm not, I don't think we're fully clear, but a little bit of clarity in there. Uh, compassion. I have compassion myself for just the complexity and how much this is held. Detachment for me, no. Devotion, Dharma, discernment, equality. Whole thing is about equality to some extent. Equanimity, eternality, faith, flow, forgiveness maybe some forgiveness, generosity, grace. Boy, it'd be nice to have some grace with this. Uh, gratitude, harmlessness, harmony, humility, yes. Impeccability. There's something in there for me that we need impe more impeccability. So some of the things that we were able to poke into, especially the stuff that's not pretty, right? That requires impeccability to do that. Joy, loyalty, neutrality, there's something in there about neutrality. Patience, purity, uh, quiescence, samadhi, selflessness, surrender. I'm feeling something about surrender to the larger process that's unfolding here. Uh, tolerance, potentially. Trust, truth, unconditional love, unity, and wise wisdom. I uh, completely okay to have a different reaction to those words than what I did, but I'm just poking into that quick. Here is the release statement. I'm going to say it out loud once so you can hear it, and then I'll repeat it again if you care to unmute and say it together. So, Oh, eternity, please take all these states of mind which are unbalanced in this pattern and balance and clear them. Do this so that I, we may more clearly, may see more clearly and find my, our way home more easily. I give thanks knowing it will be done. Certainly don't have to say it. You can change words if it doesn't land for you. But if you care to join me in the saying of it, just unmute. Oh, eternity, please, please take all these states of mind, which are, which are unbalanced in this pattern and balance and clear them. Do this so that I may see more clearly and find my way home more easily. I give thanks knowing it will be done. So we're turning it over to larger power here to help and assist with these important things. Okay, let's uh, add mm -hmm. two things. Please. Um, so one is a question and one is a statement. I'll do the statement first and then the question. So I would love to add gratitude to this mix of the transcendent states. Mm -hmm. um, I'm grateful for the privileges I do have, earned or otherwise. And it has me want to be an ally even more strongly for others. And I'm grateful to have these difficult conversations in a space where we can all learn from each other and keep, keep learning. And I always think back to a professor years ago who said, you know, it, you're never going to, you're always going to make mistakes in this field, in this world. And the most important thing is not to, that you're ever going to get it right, but that you're willing to stay in the conversation and keep learning. Mm -hmm. And to me, I'm really grateful to have that mindset. So the question I have is about impeccability. I'd love to hear more, you say more what it means to you, uh, particularly in this context. I was really curious about that, that impeccability. 
Um, with any of these words, people can put their own meanings onto it. So that's always tricky when you use words because they mean different things for different people. But for me, impeccability means um, uh, doing things even if they're hard, doing things even if they're uncomfortable, um, examining ugliness, not just sticking at the surface or the shallow, um, being willing to go into the messy. For me, that's, and I'm not saying that that's uh, all of what we did here, but um, to me, that's what impeccability means. Yeah. Can I also just, uh, in the desire for unity, mm -hmm. um, it's a desire to list all boats. And, you know, I, I'm just processing what Ruth said um, earlier and the whole concept of, you know, the, the net gain for all and no net loss. Like this isn't about uh, creating white hatred, right? <laughs> that, and this isn't necessarily about only making black lives matter. You know, I, I'm seeing anti-Semitism in my community. I'm, you know, I have native folks here um, that are suffering too. And, you know, and I'm seeing domestic violence and I'm seeing all sorts of other things. And the, this is really about lifting all boats. And some of the people that have not, <laughs> have been part of the structure that make black lives not matter are anti-Semitists who go into synagogues <laughs> and shoot people, you know? And so it's the whole, uh, I don't think, I worry that we, we don't just focus on one group or one being, that we are trying to get to a place where the word all matters again. And, um, and that's, uh, you know, and right now the word all doesn't mean all. So one day maybe the word all will mean all. Yeah. I really appreciate you ending again. You ended on your processing last time on that note too with all lives matter. And it was an interesting thing for me when I was writing the blurb because I actually put it on there uh, to honor what you had said uh, as a summation of it. And then I went back and forth and, and took it off. And then my assistant made a mistake and left it on. And then we took it off, right? So it is so sensitive, particularly for me as a white woman to say those words. Um, uh, So I think it's very powerful for, for yourself saying them, Connie. And I think at this point in time, you're the only person who can, at least in this particular group of people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I think that class matters too. You know, class and race matter too. And, mm -hmm. and this is about both. Um, and so we have to get to the point where we lift all boats. We yes. really just do. Yep. Amen to that. Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, we're already doing um, closing comments and anything you want to say to complete for today, uh, knowing this is a moment in time and this is who we are and this is the work that emerged today and it continues. I just want to thank everybody for coming and doing the work that we did today, step by step. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for spending a Sunday with us. <laughs> <laughs> Take good care. I have not decided when the next uh, processing group is, but once I will, you'll get a note. You'll get a note from Pat uh, when the recording is available from this one and the map. And uh, see you when I next see you. Take good care. Take care.